What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about all the features contained inside of the joint push-pull extension for SketchUp from Fredo 6. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, you can download joint push-pull by going to Sketchication and downloading it from there. Note that this extension is now a paid extension. You can get a perpetual license for $12 or you can get the Fredo 6 bundle for $40. I highly recommend getting the bundle because it's going to come with things like round corner, as well as curve aloft and Fredo scale in addition to things like joint push pull. So to me, this is probably the best value for extensions you can get anywhere. So if you'd want to use this tool, you are going to have to do that. But um, let's go ahead and let's talk through some of the different things that you can do with this extension. So this tool is basically designed to help you work with faces and it adds additional functionality to SketchUp. So let's say, for example, that we had the surface right here and we wanted to extrude it out, right? So if I was to tap the P key in order to try to push pull it, notice how that's not going to work, right? And the reason that doesn't work is because if we look at our hidden geometry, this face is actually made up of multiple different faces in here. And so SketchUp doesn't really have the tool to push pull um, or it doesn't really have the functionality to push pull um, all of those faces together and then kind of heal them when you do that. However, joint push pull does. So when you activate joint push pull, it's going to look something like this. And you're going to have a number of different buttons that are in here for different things you can do with it. And so you can either click the little drop down in order to activate the tools from here or just use the icons, which is what I do. And so each one of these push pulls things a little bit differently. And so I'll know I never really use this first one to thicken a surface. Um, I think it just push pulls a curved face, but I never use it. I just go straight to the joint push pull right here. So the joint push pull right here, when you click on it, is going to pop up a number of different tools. Remember that if you click the little blue arrows right here and pop this out, there's going to be more tools contained inside of this tool. But at its simplest, basically what this does is this takes a surface and it allows you to push pull it out like this. So it basically allows you to thicken that surface, which right here isn't especially interesting, but say that we were to take this curve and split this phase like this, and then we were to come in here and push pull something. Notice how you can come in here and you can push pull individual curved faces in here while leaving others non extruded. So what that does is that gives you the ability to extrude these curved faces in a way that we haven't really had with the native tools. Now, notice how there's a number of different options in here for different things that you can do with this. Like first off, you've got the selection types, right? The face selection types. Those are just going to set what's selected. And so this first option is your face selection, which is basically going to set which selection mode this is going to use to push pull things. I pretty much always use the surface option right here. So surface is going to select all of an individual surface, right? You can see what it's selecting when I mouse over it. If you were to select the all adjacent with the same material, it's going to select all the adjacent materials. Um, if you select all the connected faces, it's going to select everything that's connected. So um, usually I use those that way. I don't really use the face by face, but if you wanted to, you could use this and then mouse over things and notice how it's going to select the things that you mouse over. Right. So if I use this, I can mouse over these surfaces and then just push pull these surfaces like this. So generally speaking, you're going to be using the surface option in here. So the offset is just going to set how far something is offset on your object like this. All right. So next up, we have our finishing options. And so these finishing options are going to set what's going to happen with your original face that's in here. So if you select the original one right here and then single click and move your mouse and then click again, what that's going to do is that's going to thicken your shape, but it's not going to fill in the back face. It's going to delete that back face or the original face that you extruded from. However, if you were to select the option for thicken over here, what that's going to do is that's going to thicken your surface and it's going to leave the back side of the face. So if you want to create something that is basically a thickened shape that you can see the bottom of, you're going to want to select this option right here. So honestly, this next one, the privileged plane, I never really use. Um, it kind of allows you to dictate a direction in which things push pull like this. Um, usually I just leave this set on no. Um, I don't really have a reason to set a privileged plane in most cases. So um, you can play around with that one. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure what the usage is 
for that one, other than it sets a plain direction that allows you to set the direction of the push pull. But um, to me, that's always just generated some kind of weird results. All right, so the molding is gonna allow you to take your offset and either grow or shrink it a little bit. So let's say that I was to joint push pull this out like this, and I was to click on the molding button. Notice how I can use this to dictate that the edge that's created moves backward or forward like this. So if you want to create something that's kind of tapering or something like that, um, this will give you the ability to do that. Um, you can also flip that direction by clicking on the plus or minus right here. Once you're done with that, you could take this whole thing and scale it out or in in order to adjust that, though you're a little limited by the hidden geometry that's in here. But that is an interesting option um, for what you can do with this surface. All right, then the borders function right here is going to set how joint push pull handles the geometry that's created in here. So if you leave it on contour, right, it's basically gonna come in here and it's just going to generate this geometry and it's gonna leave it as hidden geometry that's in here. So, or softened geometry. So it's gonna make it all soft um, so that you uh, don't see it in here. However, and let's go ahead, let's take this surface, redo it over here. If you were to select the next option, I'm gonna make one more copy actually, but if you were to select the next option in there, which is the grid, what that's gonna do is that's gonna push pull this out. This is actually going to generate the um, geometry that's in here as non-softened geometry. And so what I've seen before is I've seen people use this to thicken something and then use these as like targets for like, uh, targets for like steel structures or other things like that using something like pipe along path. So um, if you do wanna be able to pick up that geometry really quickly, that can be a helpful option. And then the last option over here is if you select the none, what this is gonna do is this is going to thicken this object outward without creating any geometry in here. So if you wanna create something that's uh, just kind of outward of something else, but you don't want it to be one shape in here, you can do that using this last option for borders equals none. All right, so these last two options, the first one generates whatever you create as a group, right? So if I was to push pull this out, Right, and I wanted to generate this new surface. Notice how it's done it as a group right here. So instead of having it merge with this geometry, if you want it to be something completely separate, you can use that, which is really helpful. The other option, this outside neighbor influences directions at border. For me, that one's always given me some kind of weird results. They're kind of interesting, but basically what happens is the neighbor faces of the face you select affect your direction. So if you have this activated, notice how those are kind of forcing this to move kind of downward a little bit. So um, the direction of that surface is kind of, uh, it's kind of pushing that inward like this. If you toggle that off, then you're not going to get that. Most of the time I leave that off um, because it just gives me some kind of unexpected results, but um, you can definitely play around with that and see if it helps you with better results for you. All right, so one, and so one thing to note is that there was a really useful incremental push pull function added to this tool. So let's say that we had joint push pull active right here. Well, and then I push pull a face, right? Well, now if I do an alt click like this, what that's going to do, if I hold down the alt key and I click, is that's gonna do an incremental push pull. What that means is that means it's going to take the distance that you've already push pulled things like this, and then it's going to add that increment to it. So for creating things like steps or other things like that, this can be massively helpful um, because instead of having to push pull things up and then push pull them again, you can just hold the alt key and click in order to do this incremental instead. Once we get through the options over here at the top of the page, there's also different kinds of push pull that are in here. So for example, round push pull is a tool that's designed to basically take a number of surfaces like these, and then it's going to push pull them out but it's going to round off the edges that are created like this. So when I click, notice what this does is this creates a rounded edge in here. So generally speaking, I prefer to use more of like a round corner tool or something like that because it gives me more control or Fredo corner, which is contained in that bundle. But you can use this to create these rounded surfaces. Note that this didn't create a rounded surface in here, only on the outward extrusion right here. And so you can set your number of segments to create 
how much geometry is created on these curves right here. So usually I leave it at about the six and um, that's gonna give me a fine result like this. But you can play around with that if you don't wanna get too much geometry in your model. All right, so next up, we have probably what in my opinion is the most fun tool in here and that's vector push-pull. And so when you activate vector push-pull, this is where this vector constraint is gonna be more important, but it basically allows you to take something and it allows you to extrude it in a direction. Well, in this case, right, what that allows me to do is that allows me to extrude that in this direction and it's gonna leave this geometry right here so I can create things like this. So it's more useful for kind of these flat things where you wanna go in a direction, but to me, the most interesting piece of it is this option right here, which is project the shape on a plane. And so you'll only see that if you click the little arrow right here, but basically what project the shape on a plane is going to do is it's going to take your object and it's going to project it in a direction, but the final result is going to be flat. So in this situation, and I wanna make sure that I've activated this tool right here, we'll go ahead and put this in the Z direction. But in this situation, what that does is that allows me to take things like this surface and create a completely flat plane with them like this. So if you did the same thing with this sphere, so I'm gonna move this over and then let's go ahead and let's use a vector push pull on them. We can go ahead and do this X direction again, but in this case, what it's going to do is it's gonna extrude everything in that direction and it's gonna make it completely flat. So notice how in this case, what that does is that takes this circle and um, it makes that flat surface right here. One thing that might make this a little bit more interesting is let's go ahead and rotate this. So let's say we were to split the surface like this and then use vector push pull and push pull it this way. Notice what we can do is we can take that and we can make a flat surface from this side right here while leaving this one curved. So lots of interesting applications for that particular tool. All right, so next up, we've got normal push pull. This one always used to confuse me because I didn't understand what normal push pull actually meant. I was like, there's nothing normal about the way this tool works. But what this actually refers to is this refers to the normals of the faces. And so in 3D, what that means is that means that every face has a direction, right? Like the central point of each one of these faces is facing like a certain direction. Well, what this tool does is this uses those normals in order to do interesting things. So for example, let's go ahead and make a copy of this. Um, but let's say that we were to select this whole thing. So we'll turn hidden geometry off and use normal push pull. Well, what this is going to do, and you can see there's already some interesting stuff going on here, which we'll talk about in a second. What this one's going to do is it's gonna push pull each one of the faces in the direction of the surface normals, hence normal push pull. So this is basically taking each one of the individual surfaces and push pulling them in that direction. Now notice how this allows you to do interesting things like taper them. So you could set each one of these so that they have a taper inward. So notice how if I set the taper down like this, each one of those is going to extrude out and then taper in like this. Um, the borders and the grid we already talked about, but this other one is really interesting to me, the random push pull. And so what random is going to do if I set this and I push pull this outward, let's go ahead and let's toggle our tapering off for a second. But what this is going to do is this is going to randomize um, the size of the offset like this. So you can set a minimum and a maximum. Um, and I don't want any of these to be negative because I don't want them going inward, but you can set this so that it randomly push pulls things outward like this. And while a shape like this might not be helpful, a shape like this one might definitely be. So let's say that this was a series of boards that were stacked up. Well, let's say I was to select them and use normal push pull to push pull them outward a little bit. What that's gonna do is that's going to allow me to set this so that all of those ends are no longer uniform. So there's a lot of interesting applications for something like this, whether it be uh, some kind of a brick or whether it's boards that are stacked together, other things like that. I just love working with the uh, normal push pull tool because it allows you to do some really creative stuff. All right, so then the extrude push pull tool um, is kind of a niche tool, but basically what it does, so it's basically going to offset things along an average direction. So let's say for example, I was to use joint push pull right here. Notice how I get kind of an odd result for this circle on this face right here. Um, well, if you use this other tool, 
the extrude push pull instead. Notice how that's going to give you a better result. So somehow mathematically it's coming in here and doing a better job of um, push pulling this in this direction. I don't really use this one all that much, um, but if you do have something where you're extruding shapes on surfaces like this, this could definitely be a little bit better tool for either push pulling things out or creating recesses like this. So this follow push pull is going to follow the directions of the borders. So like for example, let's say you had a tapered shape like this one. Um, and if you tried to do a joint push pull right here, all it's gonna do is it's just gonna push pull the face out based on the face direction, right? But this other tool, what it does is it tries to take into account the shapes around it. So if I was to push pull this in like this, what it's going to do is it's going to continue um, it's going to continue the extrusion based on the direction of the faces around it. So again, kind of a niche tool, but something that you might find useful if you're trying to do something like this to simulate or recreate a taper in a certain direction. So this is probably the best tool for working with and thickening faces in SketchUp. I'll link to it in the notes down below, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below if you have any questions or anything like that. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.